Now, Brooke Baldwin, thanks for being with me. Uh, happening, of course, just on the heels of the administration striking a devastating blow to some 800,000 uh, young people in this country, known as Dreamers. They now know that DACA is coming to an end. That's the Obama-era program that allowed legal working status for undocumented immigrants who came into this country, parents who brought their children into this country illegally. It was the, the face of, of this announcement wasn't the president, as was asked of Sarah Huckabee Sanders why. It was the Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, who announced the move late this morning. So I've got a whole panel standing by. And so Ken Cuccinelli, my, my thought to you, and, and this was asked, you know, why was it uh, the AG instead of the president? And right. this was a question from Jim Acosta. And, and she wrote um, a large part of this was a legal process, that this had been deemed illegal. Um, so it's up to DOJ to make this legal recommendation. You know, ergo, it was right. uh, Jeff Sessions on the face. Do, do, do you care either way? How are you feeling about this? Uh, no, ultimately, it's the substance that counts, but it makes sense that you'd be hearing from the attorney general. It was nine, not ten. Tennessee's AG backed out, uh, but nine attorneys general made it clear they were pr ready to proceed legally in what is a slam dunk case. No one seriously debates that, that DACA is unconstitutional. The president, the former president, President Obama, made statement after statement, making it clear that it wasn't within the law. He just did it. And so now what we're hearing, measure. yes, and what we're hearing from a hostile press corps is, oh, this is so mean, it's so heartless. Hey, who's on the side of the Constitution? Uh, and on this occasion, despite the objections of people like Chris Kobach that you heard from John Gizzi and many Trump-based supporters who wanted to see it end on day one, it's of is this phase out now Hang the on a phase second. out I take, can i if i yeah, may just interject speaking on behalf sure. of my, my my journalist friends who were sitting in that room i don't think it was a hostile <laughs> press corps i think they were just turning the president's words around i mean it was the president himself on friday who said you know i love dreamers and it was the president who said months ago uh, i'm going to approach this dreamer issue by heart so it's a bit of a conundrum you know if you think about how how um empathetic sympathetic the president right. had been and now we see the result. Uh, so yeah, so let's talk about that. So um, under the Constitution, what should have happened in acknowledgement that this is illegal and unconstitutional is it should have just been ended immediately, period. Um, that's the, the, the strict rule of law position. So accommodating uh, the kind of feelings that the president has expressed uh, it results in this sort of two year phase out. It's actually almost, I guess, a two and a half year phase out because in the next six months, some of these folks can reapply to extend two more years under the White House's proposed phase out. And that does put this squarely in the hands of Congress. And as was noted, I think, by David, that um, this White House has made it clear that a DACA only solution isn't going to cut it. You need to go beyond just this one problem. And let's be really clear about this problem. President Trump didn't create a problem today. Barack Obama, when he was president, created a problem when he violated, knowingly violated the Constitution with this program. But because it's young people, it tugs at our heartstrings, and I understand that. It certainly does. Maybe that will get Congress to act. Uh, but it's going to be okay. an interesting six months. And I, by the way, have no sympathy for the additional work for Congress. Maybe the Senate should work more than two days a week for the rest of 2017. <laughs> <laughs> so you can take that up with members of Congress, and I don't know if they'd agree with you or not, but I think they only have so many more legislative days to go. Um, right. So, Ken, I wanted to hear from you. And then Andre Segura, to you, I, with a much different perspective to this whole thing. How do you feel? So I want to be very clear about what you just heard. Everything you heard about DACA being illegal is wrong. DACA, this, no, this decision by illegal. President Trump was a political position political decision and it's a morally bankrupt one. President after president for over four decades have used what's called prosecu prosecutorial discretion to determine who is a priority for removal and who is not. And that is exactly what the DACA program is. So you hear a lot of words from this other commentator about oh, Rook, rule of law, the that. Constitution. This is exactly what presidents have done under their authority to enforce immigration law, under their authority to take care of the laws under the Constitution. Uh, so your, your other commentator uh, is, is flat out wrong. I want to be very clear that this is a political decision. DACA has never been declared illegal. Uh, yes, Texas, the attorney general here in Texas where I am, has led the charge against DACA. 
but no court has ever said that DACA is unconstitutional. In fact, this is exactly what presidents do. This is what George Bush has done, one and two, Reagan, all the way back almost 50 years. Uh, so just to say words like this is unconstitutional are, are meaningless. Ken, you want Brooke, to respond? Yeah, quickly. I, look, I appreciate how you feel like you'd like the law to be. But oh, no, I don't. This I'm not was, talking this about was how a. I feel, let, hey, I, I, I sat quietly law, while you spoke. Now you please don't. Well, I don't. Well, you're, you, so the, you are. The, you're mixing the my assertion words. I'm not talking that about this, how I feel. Guys, that, voice, this, that this uh, president has um, not taken up the legal fight because he might win is just wrong. I mean, this is legally in parallel to the DAPA program, which was found unconstitutional in the same court. And if you just take constitutional as what will the court with jurisdiction say, this court has spoken to a virtually identical program. We all know the outcome. And what the president did today gives this a two and a half year life. If, you, if he said, no, we're gonna fight it, guess what? It would be over in two months with a preliminary injunction uh, like well, that. Let me, let that me would just apply respond across to a few, the country. Let me just Wait, I have one more point. I have one more point. And so you said just this is a execution of prosecutorial discretion. That is not true. This is the issuing, the affirmative issuing of work permits. That is not the exercise of withholding prosecution. That is going out and legalizing the illegal. Go ahead, Sorry, Andre. I, I, I think Laura might, Coates, I, I think see you. Might, Let me just say, Laura, I see you. I'm going to come I, I to you after Andre. I think you might not Andre. understand the process, sir. I think you might not understand the process, sir. When people are given prosecutorial discretion in this country, they are given work authorization. And the court that you're referring to is that just is the false. Fifth Circuit it's just wrong. Court of it's just Appeals. Wrong. Yes, it is. The Court of Appeals it's of the wrong. Fifth Circuit. The Court of Appeals of the Fifth Circuit was wrong. The issue has not been decided by the Supreme Court. And there are, although DAPA is legal, and the Supreme Court has not decided that it's not, there are significant differences between these two programs. The DAPA program would be much bigger. The DAPA program was termed in, in, in terms of lawful status, which DACA does not. But the Fifth Circuit was wrong on the DAPA decision. The Supreme Court has not spoken on this. So you need to be clear about when you say a court has ruled this unconstitutional. It is not the ultimate court. And president after president okay. for decades have used this prosecutorial discretion. Okay, Laura Coates. Whatever. Laura Coates. Well, federal, you know, Andre. Federal, uh, federal former prosecutor. That's a good Harry's. response. <laughs> well, Andre actually is absolutely correct in that the unconstitutional definition that's being used by Ken is actually inaccurate with respect to this case. And remember, it's all about the process here. We keep referring to the DAPA case and what's happening in Texas. Remember, at the time the Supreme Court weighed in as to whether or not there should have been notice and comment proceedings respect to the DAPA proceedings, you had Justice Scalia who had just passed away and you had a 4-4 split, which meant that there is no precedent on this issue. It has not been declared unconstitutional. The issue they're having with Jeff Sessions and Justice Department at the moment is that they do not want to be in a position to defend what is otherwise a lawful exercise of executive authority under the prosecutorial discretion standard, but they don't want to agree with the policy that they have set on the campaign trails and before at the Senate confirmation hearing they don't agree with. That's the policy behind it. But either way, it is not only premature, it is inaccurate to say that the DACA program is unconstitutional. Having said that, it is the prerogative of the President of the United States and the Justice Department to try to do away with the policy. That's the risk of having done an executive order for the past President Obama, not mm -hmm. declaring it something more, um, more forceful. Either way, however, it is a prerogative that most presidents, at least since the 80s and even back to the 50s, have exercised in terms of setting immigration policy. And how do you know? Because you have the Constitution under Article 2 that says they can do so. You've got the Code of Federal Regulations that you can do so. You've got a whole host of laws. So I'm not clear why you would use the argument that's unconstitutional when that has no bearing on a case that has not been decided by the ultimate arbiter of constitutionality, the Supreme Court. Happy to okay, address it. Okay. Okay, okay, I've got all I've got all these lawyers and I appreciate you are you know back and forth on constitutional and not constitutional. Laura is correct. Ultimately it was up to the president. We can't change, you know, the the past. The the man has ruled vis-a-vis -vis his, you know, AG, so this program is getting rescinded. We're gonna leave it. I really appreciate all of you. Thank you. We're gonna come back to DACA in just a little bit Thank and you. also talk to a couple dreamers. Thank you.